Welcome to this video where I try to explain earnings per share in kind of a quirky setting. And it's an analogy that I'm trying to bring up so that uh, you can kind of connect with it and understand what's going on. This might not help some of you think about earnings per share, but it helps uh, me in thinking about it as far as thinking about what we want and what the point of this calculation is and trying to connect it to something, uh, something else and make an analogy here. So uh, bear with me on this analogy. This whole video is about an analogy uh, uh, using earnings per share in pizza. Okay, so EAPS is like figuring out how much pizza each of my kids will get when I come home from work. So if I come home from work and I need to go pick up a pizza to get something for the family, um, I need to make sure I need another, enough pizza for my kids. Why? Well, as anybody knows, if you don't have, if your kids don't have enough food, they don't sleep at night. And they don't sleep at night, they come and wake me up at 2 a.m., uh, and say, hey, I'm hungry. I need, to, I need to be fed. These are my kids from a while, while back when I was a doctoral student. And so uh, I, it's important for me when I'm coming home to make sure that I can uh, calculate, okay, how much pizza will my kids eat? I don't want to overbuy because that's a wasteful, and I don't want to underbuy because I want my kids to have full stomachs uh, when they're eating. And it's very clear. I mean, look at this picture. This is my oldest when she was a little baby. Uh, my kids like food. And you could tell she's got this popsicle stick behind her and she's holding on to dear life to these soda cans and this wrapper right here. Big fan of food right there. Very cute legs and everything. So uh, it's important that my kids eat. Uh, they like food. And if they don't eat, then uh, they'll wake up in the middle of the night and then they'll make my life miserable. And you're probably thinking, wait a second, what does this have to do with earnings per share? Don't worry, we'll get there. All right. In addition to my kids, there's also somebody else in my life that has a preference, my wife. She has a preference over my kids for obvious reasons. I mean, the kids are just like a, they're like an extra. My wife, I mean, she's my wife, right? So uh, uh, the kids are there. I love my kids, but uh, my wife is preferred. My wife doesn't eat. Oh man, that's bad. So happy wife, happy life. I got to make sure my wife gets some pizza too. She is what I'd call a preferred person in my family. Definitely highest on my list. All right. And then there's all these other people that could show up to dinner too. Not all of these kids, but these are some kids from our, our, our neighborhood and they could show up to our house. And if they showed up at our house, um, I'd have to feed some of them because, uh, you know, you don't want to be the, the, the guys go home when they smell pizza, right? So there might be people that show up, these kids that show up to my house. And each of these kids has a different probability of actually being at my house with my kids. And the reason why is I like some of them better than others. Now, these aren't my children. My children are in this picture, but you know, some of the kids in the neighborhood, I don't just, I just don't want to have it in my house. All right. They, they go up to you and they just say, I'm thirsty. And they, they don't, you know, you, you know, you don't mind your kid playing with them, but you, when you're home from work, you're just like, uh, um, you, no pizza for you. Right. And, uh, maybe I'm a horrible person for that, but that's, you know, it's, you know, you're just allocating, trying to influence your kids who they hang out with, they, whatever. So, uh, uh, these kids, any one of these kids could show up. And then I have other people in my life that could show up. So I'm, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and our missionaries are out. And if they show up at my house, I have to feed them or I'm going to hell. No, that's not a rule. It's not a doctrine. I'm joking. But like if they show up, of course, I'm going to feed them. Of course, of course. It's automatic because I was a missionary. This is, a, this is me on my mission in Detroit. Um, and uh, I was the uh, original planker. I don't think anybody was planking before me. I, this is back in 1998, uh, planking. Uh, and so uh, if these ministers show up, then... Uh, <laughs> I have to feed them, right? So they 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 get to sit at the table and I'm all, I got to calculate, okay, who's there? What's the probability of them being there? And this is similar to what happens with earnings per share. Earnings per share is like pizza for shareholders, all right? Now you need to, as a CEO, you need to keep your shareholders happy. They have to get enough pizza. They got to get enough earnings per share they own. And if they don't, guess what happens to you as a CEO? You get fired. You get fired as a CEO if you don't do this, right? So uh, bear with me on this analogy. So what is PPP, uh, pizza per progeny? Don't put your kids to, to sleep without a full stomach or you'll need to wake up at 2 a.m. to feed them again. So what is earnings per share? I want to know my earnings per share because my shareholders will be mad for not earning enough money. They own these shares to earn money. Now, they don't have to get a dividend. It could be just the money that the business owns. So we want to find the earnings per share. Okay, and in this analogy, uh, I get my pizza. I used to get it from Papa John's. Now I, I'm, I think I'm more of a Domino's guy. I kind of like the, the stuff. I was doing Papa John's for a long time. But anyway, you get the pizza from the pizza place. Net income, you get it from the income statement. That's, you know, you calculate your net income using the net income from your income statement. 
preferred people in my family. Like I said, my wife is a preferred person. That's easy, right? My wife is a preferred preferred person. She has seniority before my kids get anything, before any of these other people uh, that are, are, are shareholders get anything. My wife gets a slice of pizza. And there's also in uh, in companies called preferred shareholders. And frequently in preferred shareholders, they will have a preferred dividend, which means they get first slice at those earnings, all right? We'll talk about those in the other examples. But what that means is that when you're calculating the amount of pizza that your kids are gonna get, I have to net out my wife's pizza. I have to say, okay, she might eat two slices and my kids get the rest, okay, that's what it is. And same for earnings per share. We net out any preferred shareholder dividends because we're trying to find the net earnings per common share of for the firm. I got common people in my family, right? My kids are common because I can't have a preference. If you prefer, I mean, you might prefer some of your kids, but you're gonna screw them up if you do that, right? So you can't have a preference. Uh, uh, to your kids. They're all equal. A senior person is my wife and everyone else is last in line, all right? Uh, so if, if you prefer, if you have a preference between your kids, I'm, I'm gonna have to send them to counseling, got all this stuff. You can't, you can't do that. You, you, all your kids, same. Everybody grab a slice of pizza, right? All get the same. Common shareholders are the same too. They all get the equal amount of the earnings. They all get an equal amount of earnings from the income statement uh, allocated to their shares as in a sense, in essence, this is what the share was worth. And then, okay, well, there's some weird things that come up because sometimes we issue shares uh, during the year and sometimes people have a right to certain shares, all right? So what if we issue shares during the year? Well, this might be if I get a foster kid coming over for dinner or something like that. You know, this is a new common person and I got to keep, you know, somebody's visiting, you know, maybe it's a, uh, somebody that's, you know, kid comes out, you want to treat them like all the other common, uh, common, common shareholders. So this is somebody that gets issued share, the shares get issued in the middle of the year Somebody comes over to my house or I foster a kid during the year. They're a new common person in the family. I can't, I'm not going to discriminate between them. Shares are issued during the year. It's very similar to that. And then we have people that may or may not show up. Any, any given time, I might not have, uh, I might have kids showing up. And the probability of them showing up and also eating uh, is varying depending on who they are and how I'm feeling and all this other stuff. And the same thing is with options outstanding. We have shares that have stock options. They're options outstanding. And those options outstanding have different probabilities of being exercised. And guess what? They get exercised if there's one rule, if they make more money. So somebody will op- exercise these options if they make more money. And so this is the, the nature of calculating earnings per share and pizza per progeny. What we're trying to do is determine how much earnings each share had and what it, it what that means for shareholders. And it's this is one of the few met- this is like one of the most important metrics in all of reporting and all of accounting and you'll see it for the rest of your life and a lot of a lot of uh, accounting instructors don't include this in the first class but um, based on uh, the retention rate of people taking accounting and then dropping out I feel it's really important to cover this because you're going to be hearing about earnings per share for the rest of your life when companies talk about their reporting and you need to know what it is so you can think about earnings per share is actually the earnings per share that is given to the common shareholders In the other videos, we'll go through some examples of how to calculate basic and diluted earnings per share. Earnings per share is the net earnings available to common stockholders, not preferred common stockholders, common stockholders, for the period divided by the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. If a firm has a complex capital structure, which a lot do, it will report basic and diluted, meaning it will factor in all these other factors of like people showing up and extra people around. Earnings per share is extensively used by analysts uh, in valuing firms, and then we do net of preferred dividends. And the reason why we do net of preferred dividends, but not common, is preferred dividends get paid to preferred shareholders. Common dividends are the same to common shareholders because they're last in line. Their dividends are the same as earnings. And so if you net out the dividend paid to common shareholders, I mean, all the earnings left over after the preferred dividends are the earnings that common shareholders have rights to. And so whether they're retained in the business or paid out in dividends, it doesn't matter. It's the same. So we'll go into more examples in a little bit. See you in the next video.